was to try and expand the public perception of what a disability is. So although today is going to be a, a relatively short leap in what people expect, the program actually took that wider and considered things like you know rural isolation, sort of circumstantial disabilities as well. So basically, as a very quick introduction, I really like making stuff, but I you know that's that's pretty common around you know things like tech support. But I wanted to emphasise specifically that I enjoy doing that with people, but also making things for people. And that's been a consistent theme through what is a kind of, on the surface, a very messy, but I guess I would like to sort of hope that it looks eclectic, sort of range of different things. And uh, done things with Dyson, uh, the NHS, um, things with Lego, uh, Sugru, but there's a nice little connection to being here in Trondheim and that I actually studied at NTNU for a year. And uh, the, the, the little one, Third along from the left is uh, some whiskey packaging for Norway's first ever smoked whiskey product. So uh, it's, it's great to be back, but that's not going to be around for another 10 years. It's still aging. So anyway, um, I wanted to sort of basically, the reason I put that there is that it, you know, it's kind of an eclectic mix of people who have this breadth of skills. And it, it feels like this is a really positive thing to have breadth, not just specialism. So we had nine projects, and today I wanted to share one of them with you. Um, which was, uh, the challenge was to help James Dunn, who doesn't have the use of his hands, um, but he wanted to take pictures, not specifically, not with an iPhone, but with a DSLR camera. So that's one with all the buttons. <laughs> Sometimes I can't pull your skin off, can I? Yeah. Ow! Sorry. Hi. Hi. Move this down. And then zoom in. And then we do a port, and because with the terminal illness, you're not going to live a full life. Can you hold it? Do you want to hold it? Yeah, I have it. So while I'm here, it's about having fun, making memories, and leaving something behind. Is that the one? Yeah, that's good. If there's any pressure in this project, it's, it's hoping that you deliver something that, that is meaningful. I am looking at this massively complex, button-covered machine. I mean, it's like the ISO, the zoom, the focus, the menu, aperture priority. I mean, the list of complexity on this thing is just huge. I'm just about to 3D print to this little orange machine in the background here. <laughs> hey James. Hi, how are you? It looks like futuristic and <laughs> tacky. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. When he's doing his photography, his mind does get blank to his pain. Feels amazing, like it's life changing. Yeah, I can't thank you enough. I want people to remember that that this is what I enjoyed and this is where I found my happiness.
it's, it's almost been impossible for anyone not to feel emotionally touched by that. And I, I wanted to actually try and change gear with, with almost the sort of blessing, as it were, from James. In the... So, um, design through doing, I think, is something that's really critical. And I think a lot of times you can get lost in your head and your sketchbook, and actually the key thing, it sounds obvious, but really trying to work with James, understand his life, understand his perspective. And, you know, this, this is a nice moment, it's a little blurry, but basically I was thinking, well, how's, James can't twist a camera like this. So I was putting lollipop sticks and elastic bands around it and thinking, can I just nudge it? Is it has it got enough torque or leverage to sort of actually operate the device? And so that led me to sort of something which I'm a very strong advocate on, uh, which is quick and dirty prototyping. As I think it's, I almost think there's strength in using that phrase in that it's saying you're not trying to make it look perfect. And actually I think there's something um, incredibly powerful about having something that doesn't look too polished. Because what happens is James is actually saying, oh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, shitting on this incredible bit of design. It's something that looks a bit rough and clunky and I can actually be really critical. And so this is James actually testing out whether this lever thing works. Um, that's me sticking some sugar on the buttons so it's less painful for him to press. And over here, just putting simple micro switches to fire a little audio cable inside the camera to click the shutter. So I think it sounds obvious, but the one thing that is different from working in a consultancy is realizing that things are going to change and you're going to be filmed. So anticipating alterations is really important. Um, so, you know, if you're working in a consultancy, you can go out loads of times, but that doesn't happen with a film crew because it costs tens of thousands a day. So uh, this is a little trick I devised of using audio cables, which are cheap, so that I could wire up and I didn't know how many cables or how long it would be. So just little things like this, the power uh, modulators were basically, I could program it on the day if we had issues, prototyping boards, and of course, the wonder of CAD that you can change things on the fly. Um, I, I really love this quote, which is slightly paraphrased from Lou Pasteur of essentially fortune favoring the prepared mind and going out there and just being ready, not, not being too smart for your own good, actually listening and watching. And so this was a moment where, you know, I was talking to James and I was like, it, trying to do a lot with your hands, but I just noticed your, your feet. It, uh, how's it to use your feet? And he's like, oh yeah, my feet are quite good. It's nowhere near as painful. And I was like, you've got a switch, what do you use it for? And he's like, oh, it's, it's redundant, I don't use it anymore. So I was like, oh, hang on, this is interesting. I could, I could fire the shutter so you don't have to reach around and press the button, which is in a really uncomfortable position and is tiny for James. So this is something I'm gonna come back to. Um, but getting James involved in the design process was absolutely critical. And so I wanted to share a few ways of, of, of doing that. And this is him riding around in his car, uh, which is an incredible achievement to begin. He's like the first person in the UK to drive a car with his condition EB. And you know, I love this picture of him being really critical and going, no, no, this isn't working, this isn't working. And down here, he's actually saying, well, you know, as he said in the video, I want it to be really cool. Um, this is great, but the sticks aren't very cool. And I was like, okay, I, I know, I know we're working on this <laughs> one step at a time. And, you know, that's kind of me going, okay, this is awkward on camera. So, but I think in some ways that's what the documentary kept in. I think it's nice to have that honesty that designers screw up, we make mistakes, we go down, you know, dead alleys. So, uh, connecting with the user. This is, this is something that could be e easily overlooked in the film, but for me, this is, this is very obvious. It's like, how do you shake hands with James? You can't, because you're also worried you might, I mean, the condition is sort of uh, casually called uh, butterfly skin. It's incredibly de delicate. And so, but you want to connect with someone. You want to sort of have a good to see you. And so, I sort of improvised and just was like, yeah, fist bumps in at the minute. And, you know, and he just completely took with this. And then I noticed the film crew doing it and the presenters doing it, and it just sort of rippled out. And I think everyone just went, yeah, James is a person like everyone else. And it sounds so obvious to say it and a little awkward, but I feel it's a point that you've got to make. So um, building on that, I think also embracing the, the creative limitations and, and dignifying James as someone who you can also push back and challenge. 
and say, you know, I, I've, I've got some experience in design. You need to listen a little and, and back and forth. So this was working with uh, Giles Dooley, um, and he's tutoring and indeed mentoring James in how he can take a picture of me. Um, and Giles, uh, unfortunately, had, in an accident, uh, whilst uh, a journalist in the Middle East, had, uh, had a triple amputation because of an improvised explosive device. But he was a photographer before this, and he continued to be a photographer afterwards. And what's incredible is that if, if we put time on this, Giles would say, if I had an hour with someone, I would spend 50, 55 minutes talking to them. And then very calmly at the end, when I build that trust and that emotional connection, take the picture. And he said, that's, it's not the buttons. It's, it's the connection with the human being that you need to be schooled in and you need to develop. So if I go to this, uh, the foot pedal again, what was incredible is that Giles was like, well, hold on a minute, James. If I go back to here, I'm, I'm putting a barrier in front of the connection of people because I have to do this. So actually, you might take better pictures than me because you can just surreptitiously click when you've got that perfect connection with someone. So I, I think sometimes it takes someone like Giles to, to give a sort of authentic pushback to someone like James to challenge him to think creatively and how his photos can develop an entirely new style even through the limitations. So, um, inclusive design. I put this in inverted commas because it's a bit of a buzzword that is sometimes it's hard in its right place, but it's difficult. Um, I like the fact that Make didn't call this, uh, sorry, Make Magazine for anyone who doesn't know, uh, really big sort of bloggers, geeks, guides, all sorts of making and hacking and tech. Um, but if you notice, they haven't said anything about this ability here. They've just said, this is really cool. It's hands-free. I'm sure loads of people will find it useful. And I think in some ways that's the best compliment myself and James as a design collective could ever hope for. Um, so hence, I think the quotes are relevant because it kind of should be invisible. It should just be something that we continually do and think about as we design in the process. So number nine, uh, open source. Uh, I'm sure everyone here knows what open source is, but essentially the notion that you can go out and make it for yourself. So all the CAD is available, uh, the app is free in the App Store. I have it here if anyone wants to play with it at the end. And uh, it's free. So, and the idea is you can make it better. This was my first attempt. Uh, I've written the instructions of how to build it on Instructables, but the whole point about Instructables is you're not there claiming that it's perfect. It's version 1.0. What next? What do you want to do with this? So, number 10, I thought I'd share a sort of hindsight, a sort of cautionary thing that I think I'm reasonably okay at, but you can always do more, and that's document the design process. And I think it's as simple as you, you can never take enough pictures, videos, uh, interviews, testimonials. You know, you'll find yourself on stage having to tell the story, and of course, if you haven't got those pictures, it doesn't kind of flow as well. Um, so this, this really helps uh, with the publicity of things like this. But I think if I was gonna uh, finish on one thing, I'm talking about the design process. But I think the key thing is to document the journey. So that's been the real joy of this. And this was James in his first gallery appearance. So uh, please also check out his other work and share the story. This is, this is James's Twitter handle if you want to see more of his pictures. And thank you very much. <laughs>